Hi, I'm Keith Coastland. I'm Linda Quinlan. I'm Ann Charles. Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. We're taping on Tuesday, March 15th in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as unceded indigenous land. Now let's go to Keith. And, and I'm first gonna start by answering Linda's question from our last show. Jane Swift was indeed the first woman governor of Massachusetts. However, she served as lieutenant governor and governor simultaneously because the incumbent was appointed ambassador to Canada. And perhaps what she is most noted for is she was the youngest governor at 36, and she gave birth while governor. To so twins. She's the, to twin daughters. Yeah. She's All right. the only governor to have given birth while in office. <laughs> so this week's trivia, they're remembered for their paper bullets. For years, they engaged in an anti-propaganda campaign to demoralize their oppressors. Who were they? Okay. So, looking at events, Rainbow Umbrella. Yes, we just had our book group. So book groups are on Sundays, and then women's discussions is on Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Are you about to start a new book, or are you still? We are starting a new book. Dan will tell us what it is. The, the death of Vivek O.G. All right. And you can go on to the Rainbow Umbrella Facebook page to get details on how to join. Outright Vermont, apply now for Camp Outright. Remember, two sessions in July this year. Thursday, March 31st, is their Leadership Day at the State House. They will be there learning how to be advocates. That is so much fun. And, and meeting with our Rainbow Caucus. Yep. So, And Friday night groups. Not only are they still going on, some of them are starting to be in person again. Yeah. So be looking at looking at what is available and where because Outright is talking about perhaps doing a hybrid event because some of our youth who live in rural areas, being able to do it on Zoom has made it much easier for them to be able to participate. Pride Center of Vermont, they've got some interesting things going on. You know, Sunday, March 20th is the Momentum Coffee and Conversation, first and third Sunday of each month virtual event. But they're also sponsoring, and Zach's going to put up the poster for contact information, Mind, Health, Soul. This Meditation? Soul yeah. being a, a sort of a bit of a giveaway. This is a statewide listing of BIPOC-identified huh. mental health and wellness providers. Huh. If I want to go see an indigenous practitioner, if I want to get health care from a person of color, I now have access. Great. And they're also continuing to do, and, and they're, Justin is great at posters, so we have another one. Every Queer Eats, and this is their program that they're doing outreach to the LGBTQ food insecure. On Wednesday, March 30th, and of course Justin has a poster for this, <laughs> this is the beginning of a virtual event, Vermont LGBTQ plus community mixer. They're looking at just having an open forum Members of our community can sign up. Just spend some time chatting with other queer folk. Hmm. I, I, I kind of like it. At the Pride Center? Or? No, it's virtual. Virtual, okay. Yeah, and the, the contact information was on the poster that, okay. that Zach was showing because, because Justin is, you know, the attention to detail. Yes. So out in the 802, first and third Thursday, their pop-up happy hour at the link in the speakeasy. Knock on the door, we'll let you in. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Dorset Players. First two weekends in April, they're doing Harvey Firestein's Casa Valentina. This premiered in 2014, so it's a fairly recent work. It's the story of men who spent weekends at a resort in the Catskills dressed as women. 
and it was based on the book of photographs, Casa oh. Susana, which is the Casa Valentino existed. That this is a recounting of a true life encounter, and it's you know this group of men who like cross dressing, telling their stories. Wow! So is this virtual or? No, this is in person at the Dorset Players. You know, Zach has a picture to show as well, and you can go on to their site Dorset and Players. and look at look at you know tickets. Wow! Sounds interesting. Yeah. Well, and. This will be interesting, and some of it is virtual and some of it is in person. The return of Wicked Queer, mm. the Boston LGBT Film Festival. We were just talking about that with a friend. Okay, so Gemmel and Tim, which is the recounting of the aftermath of the death of two gay black sex workers. Firebird, story of forbidden love between a private and a fighter pilot. And Rebel Dykes. <laughs> Rabble, and this was the narrative. Did they Rabble, live in my hood? Huh? They must have lived in my neighborhood. It could, well, well, no, because this is in London. London, oh. Rabble rousing documentary. Oh, I that. Yeah. Said in the 1980s, post punk London focuses on unheard stories of a community of dykes who met doing art, music, politics, and sex. And how they went on to change their world. Nice. So, and you know, so you have to sign up for the film sign. festival to see this because I saw right. those films yeah. and looked for them. Okay, well I'm game. Yeah. But, Although Firebird, I've already shown a clip of, and I think that might have been available. Well, that's before. why I was like, okay, this is why I thought it would be of of interest. And you can go on to wickedqueer.org to get more details, how can I sign get up, tickets. the virtuals. Yeah. Well, it, and the Brattle uh, Theater is where they're gonna do some of the performances. So if if you happen to be in Boston. Oh. <laughs> but, and then I've got some new stories afterwards. Arranged. Yeah. Because we can travel now. Yeah. Oh, you move, now it's me. Well, I said, and and then, you know, that then I will go on to my new stories after. Okay. Well, <clears throat> in Arkansas, Lambda Legal is, Legal is suing the governor over his birth control order. Governor Kevin Stitt made a decision to prohibit the state from issuing birth certificates, listing non-binary options, or allowing trans people to change their gender identities. Lambda is suing f with uh, one transgender woman uh, and uh, two non-binary uh, people. So we'll have to see what happens there. And in Oklahoma, 13 transgender people strut against anti-trans law in Arkansas. Last April, Arkansas made the news for being the first state to ban gender-affirming care for trans minors. Yeah. Uh, this is a survey uh, about uh, from NBC News about how um, how many people agree or disagree with the bans uh, <coughs> on LGBTQ people. So I'll have a little bit more about that later. Out Florida, mayoral candidate has eviscerated his bigoted opponent and won by a landslide. Boynton Beach elected a gay mayor and the first Asian American mayor in Florida's history. His opponent, Reverend Bernard Wright, <laughs> said of uh, Ty Penzerga, who was the winning um, opponent. opponent, that he's an Asian student and an immigrant with no life experience. So, good for him. Who's, who's got no life experience? The Asian mayor. The, the new Asian mayor. The newly elected mayor. I see. Yeah. Meanwhile, Idaho passes a bill that would send parents of trans children to prison. We'll have more about that. Activist Ray May Moore has died. She spent her life providing shelter to trans people in need. She turned her house into what she called Transy House and was a refuge for many New Yorkers. So... No. And then we have a story on uh, Disney CEO, um, 
and their shenanigans. Texas judge blocks probes of trans kids' supportive parents statewide. This is a temporary block and only for the family that brought suit. So. Well, I think they've since expanded on that, didn't they? I don't, not as of yet. Um, it, this was only, that's what I read, that it only had uh, to do with this particular case only. May I interject? We saw a legal scholar on Gay USA who said all of these laws are totally unconstitutional. You know, yeah. they're going to be struck down. Well, we don't know that, depending on... Uh, if it has to be on a case-by-case -case basis. So, well, this is this was statewide. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Just, and has anybody heard of Sissy, the dark queer horror made for the millennial age? No. The movie posits the question, what does social media influences and slasher killers have in common? Oh, my. And you can watch this film on SXSW. I have no idea what that is. Does anybody? FX? Sure, we've got FX. No, SX. Oh, SX. SW. I don't know. I don't know. One of those I don't know. But anyway, that's where it's it is. It's probably a streaming. Yeah. Uh, filmmaker Patricia Rosima, in her debut feature, I've Heard the Mermaid Singing, is a quirky drama from 1987 that is getting a new theatrical release. Would you want to see that? I would. Where? I don't know. Where is it going to be released? Uh, it's going to be in Boston and New York. It's I think it's doing a, like a circuit thing. A tour. Yeah. Oh, great. So. I'll well, I'd see that. And is that from the, what do you call, um, book? Well, Mrs. Stevens here, the, here's the yeah. one I'm singing, but it's also from the love song. Of J. Alfred Prufrock. Oh, okay. I have heard the mermaid singing each to each. I do not know if they will sing for me. Right. Ah, okay. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> 83 year old, this is an unbelievable story. This 83 year old trans woman is indicted over the killing and dismembering of a victim. The victim's head was found in their home. Oh, my gosh. The Brooklyn woman was charged with the murder. And, you know, interestingly enough, she was out of prison uh, for having committed two murders previous to this. So. I, mm, I have no comment. I know. Texas sues Biden administration over gender-affirming care guidance. Jessica Chaston brings prominent HIV actor activist to the Oscar luncheon. We'll have more about that. And uh, Don't Say Gay legislature has now been filed in the Georgia General Assembly. Uh, South Dakota ban on divisive concepts in education heads to the governor. And you know it's only divisive if it's, you know, about Black Lives Matter or LGBTQ. Keep in mind that that language is what they were using in New Hampshire last session when they tacked it onto the budget bill and got it through. Yeah. So anyone who thinks that there isn't a coordinated national agenda, follow the language. I know, because you know you think, oh well, how bad is, you know? Um, and may I just say something about New Hampshire? Divisive. May I speak? Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, you. go ahead. Um, but I've interrupted you several times now. But anyway, about the New Hampshire legislation, mm -hmm. the only place I heard about it was here. Yeah. Nobody, and then recently um, the governor has a challenger who is opposing this, and that's the second time I heard about this. I mean, you it's know. It's just all under the radar. Well, why is this? Well, no, part of it is what I had shared during our last show, which was, this was the end of the session. It was an amendment on a budget bill. It wasn't something that had But been, it still should be news. But it wasn't held out and debated in itself. And there may have been some reporting on it, but if you're talking but if you're talking about the budget, this little amendment which deliberately had vague language, this is part of what our opposition <coughs> is doing, you know. That isn't what people really wanted to hear about. They wanted to hear how much are my taxes. 
<clears throat> so yeah, and I wonder too if it's not some kind of national bias, like oh, it's happening in all these other countries, and New England is immune from it. But now Sununu's got an opponent. <clears throat> I really hope that Good. person wins. Yeah. But I, I've interrupted Linda several times. That's okay. Maybe we should let her continue with her <laughs> headlines. New Jersey Supreme Court affirms that conversion therapy is fraud. New Jersey Supreme Court declined to hear an appeal of the ruling that barred a religious organization from offering conversion therapy and held it liable for court fees. Good. Out Senator Chevron Jones breaks down in debate over Don't Say Gay Bill in Florida. A Christian University allegedly fires a professor for hosting a gay speaker. We'll have more about that. DeSantos, governor of Florida's secretary, spews hatred of the LGBT community. We'll have more of that. An Idaho bill would jail librarians and teachers for LGBTQ books. We'll have more on that. And a young trans man, Matthew Sampinato, is killed in a hit and run in Maryland. Thousands of students walk out of school to protest the Don't Say Gay Bill. And Governor, Flor Governor Gay Florida Police Chief is fired for promoting officers of color. Larry Scarato says he will sue the city of Fort Lauderdale, claiming the officers he promoted were the best qualified for the job. That's oh, obscene. I know. And a University of Texas lefty activist shuts, uh, University of Texas lefty activist shut down a young conservative meeting where they pound on the table. And now I'd like you to see that clip and then we will move on to Ann. So. That's a great clip, isn't it? Mm. They're pounding the desks. And so anyway, uh, Anne. Okay, well, I have some unpleasant news from all around. Uh, let's, focusing on, to begin with, North America, where uh, the Privy Council uh, has ruled that the Cayman Constitution does not provide the right for same-sex marriage. So those two... Um, Women who we've been seeing, whom we've been seeing for the last year, have had their appeal denied, and um, they. Um, Does Britain just not want to step into this, or I don't know. I mean, the decision came down on the 14th of March, so I haven't read any analysis particularly, but um, they said that. Um, the panel of five judges dismissed their appeal. Um, it was guided by the European Convention of Human Rights oh. when coming to its decision, it says, which is pretty strange. Um, this is a matter of choice for, of the Legislative Assembly rather than a right laid down by the Constitution, they said. Yeah. It adds that the couple and their legal team are now considered this article says that they're um, now considering their next steps, whether or not they should appeal to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. So let's step back a little. Uh, marriage equality in the UK's 25 uh, jurisdictions. Of these, 19 have marriage equality. Um, six British overseas territories do not have marriage equality. Anguilla, Bermuda, British Virgin Islands, Cayman Islands, Montserrat, and Turks and Caicos Islands. Now, Bermuda had marriage equality in 2017 and again from 2018 to 2022. It was terminated on March 14, 2022, yesterday also, by uh, the Court of Final Appeal. The Cayman Islands also... Um, had marriage equality for 13 days in 2019. It was blocked again yesterday uh, by the Court of Final Appeal. The six remaining UK jurisdictions 
uh, can still achieve marriage equality if their legislatures pass it or the UK government imposes it. Yeah. So the UK government has declined to impose they it. They could say, you've got to do this, that's and, it. And they haven't. So those are two very um, bad... So what happens to the people that, are, that got married in Bermuda? Well, too bad. It's not legal. But if, if it was legal and they got married, then they took it away. I mean... Yeah, so it's, you know. Um, and in related news, Barbados um, is thinking of launching a test case. A Barbados attorney suggests that the Marriage Act, um, which they have there, may not prohibit same-sex marriage. So he's going to uh, say that even it's gonna, if it's resisted in the local courts, um, it could succeed at the Caribbean Court of Justice. So uh, in Barbados, I'd like to add, homosexual acts are illegal, carrying a life sentence. Um, and Barbados is an independent British Commonwealth nation. So they have to, uh, either their legislatures need to act or, which seems unlikely, in, given this uh, yeah. homophobic climate in all of these countries, I hate to say it, despite the uh, activism. But I will add that I read a story about how all of these tourist destinations are losing yeah. money over this uh, anti-gay legislation that they're passing. Yeah. So that's kind of good news. I wish more of our LGBT and ally U.S. citizens would take heed and boycott these countries. And we could boycott, boycott Florida and Texas and Arkansas and Oklahoma and North Dakota Idaho. for that matter. Idaho. Well, yeah. um, we don't go there as tourist destinations necessarily. But some people do. Some people do. Um, A lot of people go to Florida. More bad news from North America. <laughs> Guatemala has uh, passed a law increasing the punishment for abortions and um, banning same-sex marriage. And I'm not going to expand on it. It's really dracon draconian and very harsh, I guess, which is... Uh, the legislation passed with 101 votes in favor and eight against. Oh. 51 uh. lawmakers were not present, though, and the president says he's going to veto it. So let's... Hope that he does. Uh, better news. Columbia's Constitutional Court advances gender diversity. Um, it, it, they, a, in a landmark ruling, the Constitutional Court has recognized a non-binary gender marker. So this is really good news. Uh, it's the first of its kind in Latin America. And this echoes developments around the world. Lower courts in places like Mexico and Brazil have issued similar rulings uh, recognizing a third gender. Um, but this is the first to apply across a Latin American country, an important legal precedent. Good. Uh, more good news involving pictures now. Chile, as we know, has legalized marriage equality and that law has, taken, has come to fruition. So two same-sex couples married in the country's capital on Thursday. The first are two gay men, um, Jaime Nazar, who is on the left, and Javier Silva. And there they are with their two children shortly after they were married in Santiago, uh -huh. Chile. And you see them holding their marriage certificate. They've been together seven years. Uh, and then half an hour later, Consuelo Morales and Pablo Hauser, actually, their uh, last names are omitted in part of this, in, in the basis of this article. So let's take it again. Consuelo Morales Aros, who's 38, and her partner Pablo Hauser Amaya, they're holding up their marriage certificate, and they have a daughter, Josefa. So uh, same-sex couples in Chile have been able to enter into civil unions since... 2015, uh, Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil, and Colombia are among the other Latin American countries in which same-sex couples can legally marry. So 
Um, good news. Good news from Latin America. Now, I'm kind of out of order in my notes, but I'd like to go next, if I could, to the Cameroon court. Uh, let's switch to Africa, because the Cameroon court has punished anti-LGBT violence. Uh, last week, they handed down a six-month prison sentence and a fine of $650,000, about 1,106 US dollars, to one of the perpetrators of a oh. violent attack on an intersex person last year in Yaoundé, Cameroon's capital. Good. Uh, this reflects growing recognition of the fundamental rights of LGBT and intersex people in Cameroon, including their right to be protected from violence. In November 2021, a violent mob sexually assaulted, beat, threatened, and humiliated 27-year-old Sarah, which is not her name, while others filmed the attack in two horrific videos, which later circulated on social media. So then the police arrested somebody, but released him after 48 hours. No other arrests were made. But then the activists in Cameroon um, as it, you know, got stayed on the police, and they responded to their complaint by opening a fresh investigation that led to the arrest and prosecution of this sus suspect, who was convicted and sentenced in Febru on February 25th. It doesn't say how long the sentence does, but is. But even though the rest of the gang aren't going to face be apprehended or face jail time, this is progress. Um, in an unpleasant coda to the situation in Cameroon, sexual relations between people of the same sex are criminalized and punished with up to five years in prison. Still, this is a good move, sig signaling that it's wrong to victimize LGBTQI people. So, okay, we should probably move to Keith fine. and then <laughs> come fine. back to you. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> She wants her break. <laughs> so Linda has made comments about the Don't Say Gay bill in Florida. Well, Vermont responded, and 15 of our school's students walked out. And what was significant about what happened here in Vermont is the walkouts were coordinated and supported by the school administrations. <laughs> So what a difference the state it, makes. What a difference the state makes. Here in Montpelier, there were 50 students who walked out of Montpelier High School. They rallied at the state house. They met with our Rainbow Caucus, which is our out LGBTQ plus legislators. And they have a new chant that Linda said is going to be difficult for her to learn. <laughs> but this was one of the chants. And, and Zach is showing up some of the, the signs that they were carrying. Just create, assemble, respect existence, or expect resistance. I kind of like that last yeah. phrase. Really? So last week was crossover, and that's sort of the unofficial marker that they're halfway through the legislative session. And it's also that, that sort of if your bill is going to make it to the finish line, it has to go from one chamber to the other by this state. And there were several bills that we've been following that actually made it. One was H628, which is about you know, changing gender markers on birth certificates. And in fact, the Senate Government Operations Committee took the bill up today. They're doing more hearings on Thursday. And they're expecting to vote it out of their committee and to the full Senate Thursday afternoon. So that's moving quickly. S30, which was the um, bill to try and deal with the Charleston loophole that Governor Scott vetoed, the veto was overridden by the Senate, but the House really didn't have the votes to override it. So the Senate quickly recreated the bill sent it over as a new piece of legislation with a minor change. Now, one of the things about the Charleston loophole, what that's all about is under federal gun regulations, when you go to purchase a firearm from a commercial vendor, 
you have to go through a background check. Right. And the expectation is that that background check will be completed within three days. The Charleston loophole, and it came about as a tragic incident that occurred in Charleston, is after the three days, the background check wasn't back. So the gun dealer then has the option of just selling the gun to the person who was trying to create the transaction. So that's the loophole. The background check wasn't completed, but you still got the gun and you may not have been entitled. Right. Our legislature first thought, okay, that's not okay. We need to tighten that up. <clears throat> and they changed it to a 30-day, basically, waiting period. Right. That the feds had 30 days to complete it, and Governor Scott said that's much too long. So what S-4 does is it reduces that to seven days, which apparently from the testimony that's been provided, that's that should be that. a reasonable time with all of the com computer programs for the feds to get back to a commercial dealer saying, yes, yes, Ann Charles should have that handgun, mm -hmm. or no, that Linda Quinlan shouldn't. <laughs> so... Now, what about that, the loophole with, you know, people who sell, sell guns online or people who sell privately this, or they sell at, you know, gun shows? Okay. None of that applies to these people, though. See, that's outside the federal legislation because they are not a commercial licensed firearm dealer. I can just walk down the street and sell you anything and nobody's going to know I've done it. So, I mean, there's... Okay. Um, um, unless I put a chip in your gun and I follow it around. I, okay, the other things that are going on, S-139, this was about school mascots. Made it through the Senate, it's on to the House, so that schools cannot use racial, gender, sexual orientation, stereotypic presentations. Not going to be allowed in Vermont schools. <clears throat> this is not going to make Ann happy, but... S-254, qualified immunity, made it through the Senate, but it's nowhere near the robust bill it was. There was a lot of pushback, and they were uncertain what they would be able to get through the full legislature. So, But what is it? I need to read the fine detail. And at this point in time, because the Senate watered it down so much, we need to just be watching what the House is doing so we have a sense of what a final version might look like. As opposed to S-171, which is the statutory code of ethics that the Senate left in its robust form, and it will cover all three branches of government. Right. Good. And Becca Ballin's bill of affordable housing, it's going, it's intact, Good. but we're going to want to look at what are the provisions that are part of it. Stalton didn't make it. Some of it is surprising. S-189, this is a bill that could make it out of the Senate Education Committee that would try and create a curriculum for teaching about the Holocaust. Oh. I, I don't get it, but and protect me from Anne, but no wa knock warrants didn't make it through. Oh, um, that's an obscenity in the law. And... H-329, this is the bill that was in the House government, uh, general and military housing, that would have amended the definition of discrimination and harassment. It was ready to go, and then the school board administration, school board association came in and opposed it, saying, oh, we, we don't have the resources. This would just be so cumbersome for us. This is the argument they have used for the last several sessions of, you know, well, we all understand, you know, when a student's being harassed and we do things. Mm -hmm. Talk to Outright Vermont and let's see yeah, if you get really. a different opinion. And very quickly, you know, I had made a reference on our last show about the U.S. Supreme Court and why we should be concerned and why we should be attentive. One of the things that was clearly demonstrated to me in a recent um, webinar that I participated is that all of the cases 
that the U.S. Supreme Court has upheld LGBTQ plus rights protections, yes, indeed, you were included, are based under two premises. One is under privacy. The other is on, under this, we're all entitled to a sense of dignity. What was pointed out to me by the legal scholar was that neither of those two phrases or pieces of language are included in the US Constitution. This is totally an interpretation. The first time one of those decisions gets overturned, you have the potential of losing everything that might be associated with it, which is why I'm looking at Roe v. Wade right now and the fact that this court does not seem to be honoring precedent that was based yeah. on a premise of privacy. If we lose that, then we're going to be losing sex, you know, under Title VI, you know, and all of the other decisions, marriage equality, it could have a domino effect. I know, it seems like we're living in two different countries, doesn't it, in some ways? Yeah. Well, that's why we... And one of the things that was pointed out is that if those federal gets decisions get overturned, it's what is in place for state statutes. And we still have 29 states that have not enacted basic protection for sexual orientation and gender identity. They probably identity. won't either, most of them. Idaho and Oklahoma come to mind. Yeah. Texas. Florida. Georgia. But go for it, girlfriend. All right. Well... I don't know if this is encouraging news or discouraging news. I'll let everybody else decide. But anyway, most people, uh, according to this uh, poll by NBC, uh, the survey, uh, so let me see, 62% of those surveys oppose legislation that prohibits LGBTQ people while 37% supported these measures. 61% Republicans supported a ban in schools, while 20% of Democrats and 35% of independents supported such measures. 43% of those 65 or older agree with the ban, but the number drops by one third for those 50 and under. So. Well, I'm in aggressive. It's the babies, boomers. I'm aggressively optimistic about the whole thing. Are you? Uh huh. Oh, Six, good. Sixty-seven yeah. percent is is a reasonable. Yeah. Sixty-two, I think. Was 62. Oh, sixty-two. People in our favor. Yeah. 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 Okay. But you know, it it's of course skewed by whether you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent, and age. So anyway, meanwhile in Idaho. They passed a bill that would send parents of trans kids to prison. The crime is providing medical care for their kids. The bill would ban puberty blocking treatment and gender co confirmation surgery and make it a felony if doctors or parents provide it. It is also a felony if you take your child out of state. The sentence is prison and removal of your child from the home. Do you think that'll prevail? Probably. In Idaho, maybe. I don't know. I, it, maybe I have my head in the sand, but this is just so outrageous. You it, it depends on how the courts act with Texas, which this is where you know they're modeling their language after what mm -hmm. the Abbott did for his executive order and what they couldn't get through their legislature. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, if it passes, it'll be bill, and then of course people will take it to court and it'll go through the courts. But in the meantime, what happens to these people that fall into you know, this this quagmire of law. Well, maybe it'll you know? be like in Texas now that the judge will have issued a restraint yeah, as well. it works its way through the courts. Yeah. And then it gets to the Supreme Court and they say, oh, sounds good well, to we'll me. Well, we'll see. All right. <laughs> You're more optimistic than I am. I'm trying. Disney CEO apologizes for its LGB, to its LBGT employees after a botched response to Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill. Mm -hmm. Bob Chapek, chief officer in Disney, had donated to all the Republican sponsors of the bill. After an outcry from stars, producers, 
and content creators, Chapik adjusted a course and donated $5 million to LGBTQ rights organization. The company should have tried to stop the bill before coming, uh, from becoming law before trying to buy their way out of it. The company uh, donation to HRC was rejected by them. So uh -huh. that's good. His defense was he hadn't made a public statement because he was working behind the scenes yeah, yeah, yeah. to try and oppose the legislation. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you give all this money to your... Mm -hmm. uh, but they gave money to Democratic candidates as well. I, I know, but, yeah. you know, you either... Anyway. I mean, that's the, that's the problem. All these people get... These companies get HRC ratings, but they're... Yeah. Contributing to people who oppose to right, homophobia. Right, exactly. Exactly. You know. Jessica Chastin brings prominent HIV activists to the Oscars luncheon. Chastain played Tammy Faye in the eyes of Tammy Faye. I love that movie. Did you? I didn't see I it. I did. Her guest is Reverend Steve Peters, who formerly interviewed Baker in a 1985... Um, Movie, uh, uh, let me see, what am I, oh, oh wait a minute, movie, uh-oh, uh <laughs> God, I'm sorry, anyway, um, and she, lib. she took him, I know, <laughs> she took him to the Oscar luncheon, and um, he had interviewed, his name is Peters, and he interviewed uh, Timmy Faye back in the 80s, and he really thought that it was important that people know that she was supportive of, of helping people with AIDS yep. and that she was instrumental in talking to the Christian community about this issue. So, um, anyway. Is Tammy Faye Baker still alive? I believe she is. I don't think her ex-husband is, though. Jim? No, I, I thought don't. Tammy Faye died of cancer. Maybe she did. I can't remember. And you'll have to look it up. I know. <laughs> oh, here it is. All right. Anyway. So, oh, um, Christian University allegedly fires a professor for hosting a gay speaker. He invited several speakers to his class to talk about obstacles they had to overcome in their lives. But Oklahoma Christian University professor Michael O'Keefe who has taught for 41 years, was sacked. And the person he invited to come into the class was an alumni. Yeah. So. DeSantos, governor of Florida's secretary, spews hatred of the LGBT community. Christine Pushaw says that the ban uh, discussion of LGB topics in school, did you hear this? This is incredible. Mm -mm is an anti-grooming bill. And if you are not against it, then you must be a groomer. Or you don't denounce the grooming of four to eight year olds. Well, that's a lovely person. And an Idaho bill would jail librarians and teachers for LGBTQ books. Also museum cu curators and college employees for allowing books to be given out if deemed obscene. The bill is on its way to the Senate. The penalty for defying this law, you could end up with a year in prison or a thousand dollar fine. So that's my good news. That's another crazy law that can't. I know. Well, let me just tell you about Tammy Faye Baker, okay. if I may. She died in July 2007 at the age of 65. Huh. She'd been suffering from colon cancer, which spread to her lungs. As reported to her, the New York Times obituary, she left behind two children. Yeah. Okay. Thank um, you, Ann. My great pleasure. Well, let me um, turn to one more sort of happy story in Europe before I move to Ukraine. Uh, this is a film. Linda has accused me of giving long <laughs> summaries, but this is only two paragraphs. It's <laughs> Anise in Love. It's French. The title character is care a carefree young student who's late for every appointment behind her thesis about passion. 
in 17th century literature and owes two months' rent. Her charms may mollify those who are impatient with her, uh, but they also capture the attention of Daniel, whom she meets at a party. He's a much older man, a publisher. He's smitten with the impulsive young woman. Why watch the movie? <laughs> well, there's more. <laughs> they, they begin an affair, however, it ends almost as abruptly as it begins. And now the interesting part happens. Anis soon becomes infatuated with Emma Lee, a writer who's Daniel's partner. She feels a deep connection to the woman she barely knows, especially after reading one of Emma Lee's books. Hoping to live out her desire, she pursues Emma Lee at all costs, and the two women do bond at a literary symposium where Emma Lee is speaking. But as they dance closely one day, Daniel shows up. His uh, efforts to control the situation only propel the young enchantress, enchantress to up her game and seduce her crush. Will love win out? Anais in love succeeds on the main character's irresistible appeal. And this is a quirky ending to this review. If viewers don't find her manic character irritating. <laughs> so I think it looks interesting, especially the academic symposium with a lot of romance in it. Ouais, pas la peine de courir, on l'a raté. Tu me vois quand t'as le temps, tu me cases, t'avances comme un bulldozer. Oui, je sais, je suis un gros tracteur, tu me l'as déjà dit. Bonsoir, Daniel Moreau Baba. Anaïs. En fait, je vais vous retrouver là-haut, ça vous dérange pas C'est Émilie Oui. Bonjour, vous êtes Émilie Ducret Oui. Tu la trompes souvent, Émilie <coughs> Tu me crois pas Ben non. Je suis en train de lire un de vos livres. Je l'ai pas encore fini, mais j'adore. Enfin, j'ai l'impression qu'on a des sensibilités très proches. Pardon, mais j'ai rendez-vous chez mon éditeur, justement. Oui, oui, bien sûr. Bonjour, je suis Anaïs. Ah oui, Anaïs. Ben, je suis venue parce que j'ai envie de vous voir. D'accord. Je vais te demander un truc qui va te sembler incongru. Je veux pas être emphatique ou grandiloquente, mais enfin, tu, tu as mon dessin entre les mains. Putain, mais qu'est-ce que tu racontes J'ai besoin de me retrouver seule avec Émilie. Vous voulez pas qu'on se promène Vous écrivez sur quoi Vous êtes indiscrète. Daniel On peut savoir ce que tu fais là J'ai pas de compte à te rendre sur les visites que je fais à ma femme. Ma femme C'est quoi ce sentiment de propriété inadmissible Elle est pas à toi, Émilie. Hein. Vous êtes même pas mariée en plus. Non, mais on est vraiment chez les dingues. Vous êtes qui, Anaïs Let's turn now to Ukraine. Um, a gay app, a gay dating app, is helping to house queer people fleeing Ukraine. It's called Romeo. It's the European equivalent of Grinder. It's become a mutual aid hub for Ukrainians fleeing the country uh, as the Russian invasion continues. Unlike Grindr, it allows users to join forum groups. And at the start of the week, the app launched an official group called Shelter for Ukraine. Um, since its launch, 10,000 users have joined with people from all over Europe offering queer-friendly shelter for our rainbow family and their loved ones. That's what it reads. Although some users point out that Ukraine, Ukrainian men are being conscripted if they are between 18 and 60, um, the, a Romeo spokesperson said the group isn't ex designed exclusively for the app's uh, user base, which is largely gay men. It's also intended for their loved ones, including women and children. Um, what about lesbians? Yes, including lesbians. Uh, but I have news from a lesbian in my next story. Okay. Um, LGBTQ plus refugees fleeing Ukraine are hoping to face compounding threats. And those of us who know anything about LGBT life in the region are very uh, yeah. alarmed. There's the intense homophobia of the Russian government. Um, then there's Poland, Hungary. to which over a million people have fled, a notoriously homophobic country, and um, Hungary also. And uh, 
but Romeo is one of dozens of online grassroots efforts driven by ordinary people that have sprung to action since the invasion of Ukraine. Um, and now... We're almost out of time, Ian. You've got a couple of minutes. Okay. Well, let me show you a picture then of two Ukrainians whom I'm not going to be able to t tell you much about. Uh, this is the director of Gay Pride. Um, his name is um, Yura Davijon. He helps uh, Gay Pride. And um, another is a lesbian DJ whom, uh, who was interviewed for this article. And what they're saying is um, Ukraine is homophobic, not as homophobic as Russia, certainly, but a lot of the uh, a lot of gay men are joining the fighting with the Ukrainian troops, and so there's no homophobia in the military, apparently, according to these informants, and that oh. they're going to stay and fight. So those are their pictures. I'd hope to tell you more of their stories, but maybe next time. Yeah, I think that's interesting to hear about their stories, so maybe you could hang on to that article. Well, the DJ is hiding in the basement of the bar where she works, and um, they're con they're, um, start they have social media networks that are operating throughout. And so they're, tr they're doing as much as they can. Yeah, well, they'll the probably ground. take those towers down, and they probably won't have it forever. Well, I don't know, Linda. Linda's really doom and gloom. I'm, you know, it's a challenge for someone who's I'm aggressively a, optimistic. I'm, I'm a realist. Um, I have no comment. I know. I mean, we've been doing this for over six years. Oh, please. <laughs> okay, Keith, you have trivia and any any other news? That well, you no. Like the, to tell the, us? the the trivia is that. Okay. So remember, for their paper bullets, an anti-propaganda campaign. And even if I told you the names, you would be like, who? Oh, yeah. Lucy Schwab and Suzanne Malburn, also known as Claude Cahoon and Marcel Moore, which was their performance names. These were French lesbians who, between 1940 and 1944, ran their paper bullet campaign against the Nazi regime where they wrote little notes as though they were Nazi soldiers, and they would slip them into the pockets of soldiers and put it on the windshield of vehicles and just sort of discreetly to create this sort of underground anti-propaganda movement. And of course, they searched them out. They arrested them. They sentenced them to death put them in you know, a camp, but they survived. But what was an interesting part of this narrative was even when they were in the camp, they created a similar network where they would write messages on pieces of toilet paper, attach it to string, and put it from barrack to barrack to barrack to barrack. They ultimately survived, and even in jail, they continued to fight the Nazis by reaching out to other prisoners and spreading a message that hope and love can conquer all. Huh. So, mm. Somebody should write their story if they haven't already. Well, there is a book that's actually called Paper Bullets ah. that recounts their experience and their story. You know, there's so many people to remember for so many wonderful things, you know? That's why we have trivia. Resistance. Okay, <laughs> let know? me, can I just... Um, okay, go ahead, you have uh, three minutes. We have a minute left. I, I didn't identify the lesbian DJ. Her name is Natasia Kosak. Um, and she says, the war has brought you LGBT Ukrainians together like never before. It's begin, begun to feel like past divisions, including disputes over gender and sexuality, don't really matter. And let me conclude with the words of another activist. We didn't run in this very important moment. We stayed. It's very important for all Ukrainians. If we, still, if we are still in Ukraine, um, after this moment, I hope that our people will see us as equal. That's why we fight. So encouraging. Well, that is a very encouraging Ukraine. and upbeat note to end on.
Okay. And leads you right into... Well, remember, resist. resist. 